then let's have a look of lab six. Lab six is a little bit different. We are going to use the MATLAB here. So at the first step, I will talk about how to do the installation for the MATLAB and the uh, communication toolbox that we need in the lab. And the second step, we'll just like previous lab, we just discussed the details about the lab, uh, how to do it and the general questions. Okay, let's go to the first one. Uh, for the installation, it's pretty easy. What you need to do is just click the link or search online or in the Google and install the newest version of the MATLAB, which is R2021A, this one. You just put your email here and click the continue. Then you will receive an email ask you to uh, like uh, download through that link. And you also need to register with your uh, CID because uh, for the students, we have free version to use the uh, MATLAB. And after the installation, let me open my MATLAB here. After the installation, what you need to do is open the MATLAB and have a look of the middle in the panel. Can you see the add-ons here? What you do is you use the get add-ons. Then you can see something like this. What you need to do is to find the communication toolbox. Message here. Communication toolbox. You need to install this one as well as the toolbox for Bluetooth and this one. So you, you need to install two stuff instead of one stuff in the document. Uh, you can see our document uh, is here. What about this one? Our document only says we need to install the uh, toolbox itself, right? But we also need to install this one for the Bluetooth protocol. So they are separate stuff now. So we need to install them both. But you will figure out by yourself if you miss that, miss that. Because if you if you didn't install this library, you are not be able to run the command here. So after the installation, what we need to do is getting familiar with the MATLAB. Uh, basically, what we need to do is pretty simple. Just click the button here, the new script. And we open a new script here. Uh, what we need to do is just copy the command here and paste, then run it. I use control and enter to run this command, but you can also click this button to run the script. And you can see we have opened an example for the Bluetooth channel hopping. Uh, you can read through this uh, code, but it's not necessary. All you need to do is click the run button again. Then you can see something output here as well as two windows just popped out. You can see there are two windows here. So, so basically we can close it and have a look of this one is channel selection algorithm one. So in the lab six, we are going to have a look and understand what is channel selection algorithm one. And you can also see a control panel panel like this, and we will save it for later. Okay, so this is the MATLAB installation and setup. Do you have any question about that? 
for the installation, it should be very easy. And some students may have the older version. So I suggest you to install the latest versions to make sure you can do the lab. And for the lab, lab the MATLAB is pretty, pretty easy to control. All, all we need to do is just copy and paste and run the command. And that's all. And you can also learn some syntax as you click, click the link of the tutorial of MATLAB. It's pretty similar to Python. And after the setup, let's have a look of the lab six. Let's have a look of the document here. Uh, sorry. Let's have a look up here. What is the first task? It's to explain the algorithm one, right? And the task two is also explain the algorithm one, a part of it. So let's have a look of the algorithm one here. You can see a link here. It's a document. Uh, it's a document for the Bluetooth. And we should go to the page of, uh, let me see, page of 2644 here. Uh, all we need to do is to read through this chapter here, channel selection algorithm one. You can say it's, uh, algorithm one is pretty simple. All we need to do is uh, two stages, calculation of the unmapped channel index, following by the map to a data channel index from the set of used channels. And we also need to, you need to use the equation here, something modulo by 37 is a fixed value. And they also have another equation here. And that's, that is the flow chart of it, of the whole algorithm. Then, and we need to explain why we need to, well, what should we do in here? You can say the yes and no. If, if it's yes, what should we do? And if it's no, what should we do? So all you do is go through this chapter and explain this algorithm in your report. So that is the task one and task two. Uh, I can discuss the details of the algorithm later. Let's have a look of the last task like at first. So for the task one and two, do you have any questions? Uh, how long should the explanation be? Should be pretty short, I think, but like, uh, several, maybe one paragraph, no more than maybe two rows. So what you need to do is just make it clear. But be, be careful, we, we are not expect you to copy or use the screenshot of any part of the document. So you need to use your own words to describe it. So actually it's pretty clear in the document. What we need to do is just understand what it says, like for this paragraph, uh, what you need to do is just understand it. But you can still also, also uh, like uh, use the equation here. You can copy the equation to your report, but, but we are not expect you to copy the whole paragraph into your report, okay? Just use your own word to describe it. Uh, 
Okay. Mm, and that's all for the task one and task two. And for the task three, let's have a look. What should we do in the task three? Uh, it's given us a scenario. Uh, for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is operating on channel one. Then we should select the good and bad channels for this scenario and select a hop increment of your choice. Set the number of channel hops to 10 and then generate the hopping sequence for the 10 hops. Okay, so what we need to do here is use the channel, uh, use the panel here, control panel of the Bluetooth that we, uh, you can get this panel by running the MATLAB script. What we need to do is at first, we need to figure out what is the bad and good channel is for, the, for our Bluetooth. For example, I select zero to five channel as my bad channels and select five as my hop increment. And then I, I put 10 as my channel hops to generate here as it requires here. So I can I click the visualize channel hopping and I can observe what, what happened and click the generate hopping sequence, then you should see something like this. So what you need to do is uh, upload the graph into your report. You can save the graph into your desktop and put it in your report. But I'm not talking you should do this thing because I'm selecting some random good and bad channels here. You need to figure out what is the back channel in this scenario, okay? For example, you may consider uh, from zero to 12 is bad channel. Then you click the generate hopping sequence. Then you will get a totally different graph, okay? And if you consider the first 16 channel is bad channel, and you create the generate hopping sequence here. It's totally different graph. You can see that it's different. So make sure you select the back channels as required. So let's discuss how to select the back channel in here. You can see because there is a Wi-Fi channel in operating in channel one. So will this affects our Bluetooth? Of course, yes, because they are using the same, same frequency. So let's have a look of the, uh, lecture notes here. You can see, uh, at the 50 page here of the Bluetooth week seven like lecture notes, you can see they are overlapping if, with each other. For the channel one in Wi-Fi channels, you can see the uh, frequency uh, is not really clear here. Let's back to the... All points here. You can see for the channel one for Wi-Fi, the frequency range is from 2401 to 2423. And we need to figure out what is this frequency to, to the Bluetooth, okay? So for the Bluetooth, because we know uh, the Bluetooth channel should be use the same frequency around here. We can go through this this graph here, you can figure out, uh, you can know now for the channel zero, channel one, two, three, four, five, six, right? You can figure out by yourself. So how much channel 
is overlapping with the channel one in Wi-Fi frequency, in Wi-Fi channel one, okay? You should have a look of these numbers and these numbers and figure out how much channels are overlapping. So if they are overlapping with the channel one in Wi-Fi, then we should consider they as a bad channel. So I just take an example here. I assume from channel zero to channel 15 are all bad channels, right? Let's generate the hopping sequence. So we got a graph here. And in order to understand the graph here, which means the algorithm one. So we need also need to calculate by my hand to understand this. So why the first hopping is into the 21 channel here. And the second hop is at 26. And third, third hop is at 31 here. So we need to understand how the algorithm works. So let's have a look of the uh, Excel here to understand this. Let me open this. So why the first one is 21? Uh, in order to understand the algorithm one, let us to use the Excel table here. So before we run the algorithm one, we need to figure out what is what is the uh, what is the unmapped channel? Oh, sorry. Or what is the available channel here? So what is available channel is depends on us because we select some bad channels here, right? And generate this graph. So the bad channel, uh, we have some back channel here, let's count them. It's 16 back channel here and 20 good channel here. So the available channel is 20. Does this make sense? Yes. So you can count the number under the under the uh, this box, the blue box, under the blue color. They are uh, totally. Uh, is it twenty or twenty one? I think it's twenty. Six. Oh, sorry, it's twenty one. It's my bad. Twenty one. And the available channel is from 16 to 36, right? We can build a list maybe in Python or in MATLAB. Uh, let me just open the Python here. Let's open the, uh, so the available channel is from 16, let's call it AC, AC, uh, list range from 16 to 36, sorry, uh, something in here. Yeah. So this is the, all the available channel here. You can, count, can put it here, okay. So the length of the available channel is 21. So it's this number. So we have these two numbers, then we can start our calculation. So at the, at the first step to calculate why the number is 21, we need to use the unmapped channel. We need, need to calculate the unmapped, unmapped channel here. So according to the document here, here, the unmapped channel, you can find the equation here, equal to the last unmapped channel plus the hop increment because our hop increment is phi, right? You can find it here. The hop increment is phi and the first element is zero. So zero plus phi modulo 37 equals to phi. Just follow this equation here, okay? 
And then we need to figure out is the phi here represent a bad channel. So we also need to look back here. Let's have a look. Is it phi channel? Is a is it fixed channel? Is a bad channel? Yes, because it's in the gray color. So it's yes. So we also need to calculate the sorry. I can't see this stuff. What happened? The remapping index here. We need to calculate the remapping index because it's a bad channel. So it's phi modu modulo by 21, actually. So you can find the equation here. Remapping index equal to our map channel modulo number used channels, number of used channels. So which is phi. So what does it mean by phi here? Because you can see we calculate an index here. So we need to figure out uh, what is the fifth element in this list. So we can use Python to help us. It's 21, right? Because the fifth element in this list equals to 21. So it's 21. Is it correct? Yes. So it's 21 here. And let's calculate the second number because the unmap channel is phi here. So we use phi plus the increment, which is phi and modulo 37 equals to 10. And is it 10 a bad channel here? Because we can have a look at this. The 10 is under the gray box. So it, it is a bad channel here. So what, need, what we need to do is calculate the remapping index here. So 10 modulo 21 equals 10. So we need to figure out what is the 10th elements in this list. So, okay, you see 10 is 26, okay? So let's have a double check of it. Yeah, it is 26. And let's calculate the third, third row. So 10 plus five modulo by uh, 37 is 15. And it's still bad, a bad channel. And let's calculate the remapping index here. It's still 15, right? 15 mod modulo 21 is still 15. And what is the 15 elements in here? It's 31. And let's calculate the fourth row. It's 15 plus five modulo 37. So it's 20. And is it a bad channel? Let's have a look uh, here. Is 20 channel, is this channel a bad channel? No, it's a good channel, right? So if this answer is no, then we, um, we don't need to calculate the index here. We just use the 20 directly. So copy here to, to here. And let's calculate the next row. Uh, 25, right? And is it a bad channel? It's not the bad channel. So we can copy the number here to here. So is this make sense? So you can see, that's how it works. How we calculate the number here. So that's why uh, the first number is 21. The second number is 26. And the third is 31. And the fourth is 20. So that's how the algorithm works. And after, the, if you can understand the algorithm here, it must be pretty easy for you for these labs. All you need to do is calculate the bad channel 
by yourself, I have a look of the overlapping of them. Then plot the graph and calculate by yourself why they are hopping like this. And that's all for the overlaps. So if you are not able to run the script in the MATLAB, so you, you should maybe consider to install the newish version of MATLAB. Actually, we don't have a lot of questions related to this lab. So if you have any question, just feel free to ask here. But if you do not have any question, you can also feel free to leave. And also, if you have any question regarding to the projects, you can also ask here. How many samples would you recommend for collecting the projects? Uh, I would say uh, I'm not pretty sure for that. So what I recommend is you need to prove yourself you have enough data. Maybe you can plot a curve. Uh, for example, if you are using uh, machine learning stuff, then you can plot a curve of your accuracy by adding the training and, and test set. You need to prove by yourself you have enough data. So which means, uh, yeah, which means uh, we need some details to support that. It's not necessary to have lots of data. For example, you have collect like uh, maybe let's say 5,000 5, different gesture. Uh, I wouldn't say it's not enough, but maybe it's more than enough. So what maybe all we need to do is to use some data to calculate the accuracy. and draw the plots of the accuracy. So do you have any further questions? Uh, if you would like to share your screenshots, I can, you can share it. Let me turn off the recording now. <laughs>